In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Greetings to you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Uh, we're back again, OI2ID, coming out with another banger of an episode. Um, and today we're coming back to you with another series. Um, and this series, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, the upcoming fast. I'll be you told, we're going to be talking about a little about the fasts. So make sure to t- tune with us and to stay uh, connected with us and also listen to the podcasts. Uh, the beginning of the series, which we're calling Road to Resurrection. Make that a hashtag, whatever you need to do. I want to see that on all of my social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever it is, Road to Resurrection. All right, everybody, make sure that you guys tag us too. But yes, we're talking about the Abu Yutzon fast. Yes, we're talking about the Great Lent fast. And today, this episode, we're going to be talking about fasting and just to kind of give you guys an introduction of what Abu Yutzon is and to kind of talk about and discuss a little about the fundamentals of what fasting is. So I hope you guys tune in and make sure to share to every one of your friends that you think will benefit from this. So with that being said, may our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ open our hearts to listen and to learn from His holy words. So, <clears throat> the Great Lent Fast, Abi Yitzom. Um, let's start with the name. Let's kind of break down what the name means. So, Abi Yitzom is a good word that basically translates to the great fast, right? Abi means great and Tzom obviously means, you know, fasting. So why is it called the great Lent fast or Lemdin? Like why is it called Abi or great fast, right? A lot of people assume that the reason why it's called great fast or the great Lent fast is because um, it's super long, right? People think, you know, everybody knows Abi Yitzom is very, very long. It's like what? Two months, 55 days, it's very long. So they're like, oh, okay, makes sense why it's called the Great Fast, right? Because it's 55 days and it's really long. Well, mm, not really. The reason is, if you literally look at all the fasts that we have in our church, there's so many of them I know, uh, that the longest actually is not the Great Lent Fast. The longest is the Wednesday and Friday fast that we do in the Orthodox Church. Yes, every single week we fast two times a week, right? Every single week. There's 52 Fridays and Wednesdays every single week. So if you add that up, imagine we're fasting every single week. So if we're talking about numbers, uh, Wednesday and Friday fast is much more longer than when we talk about the Abiyut's own fast. So that's not why it's called the Great Fast. Rather, the reason why it's called the Great Fast, or the greatest of all the fasts, is because this is the fast in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself fasted. This is why it's called the Great Fast. That being said, um, there's several names that are attributed to this fast, right? Uh, one of the names, of course, is called uh, Yakasatom or uh, Compensatory Fast. That's one of the names that it's called. The reason why it's called Yakasatom um, is because it was through the disobedience. If you guys remember Genesis chapter 2, where after God created mankind in his own image, he gave them one commandment, which is to not eat from the forbidden fruit, right? And Unfortunately, through the deception of Satan and the disobedience of mankind, uh, Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit and then they were what? Cursed out and they were brought out and thrown out of Eden and curse, shame and death entered into the life of uh, mankind. And thus we were enslaved to sin and hell. And because of that, um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the first road of salvation or the first victory uh, that he performed or the first victory in the battle towards uh, freeing us from our sins that he performed was, of course, uh, you know, fasting this fast that Adam originally broke, right? Because the first commandment was broken by Adam, which was fasting. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in order to, you know, uh, take back that victory or take back that loss that we took, that big L that we took in the garden, what did he do? He came and fasted for us, right? And actually, St. Isaac the Syrian <clears throat> says something really beautiful. It says, the Savior began the work of our salvation with what? Fasting. That's what he says. He began the, the works of our salvation with fasting, right? So the same, uh, he came to, you know, give us victory over uh, what the first defeat was, which was fasting, right? So that's one of the reasons why it's called the uh, compensatory fast. So uh, when we're talking about fasting, one of the main questions that people ask uh, is what? Is fasting biblical, right? That's the main thing that people want to know. Is fasting biblical? Is it even in the Bible? Like, y'all just making this up? Because we don't do this. So why is the Orthodox Church and doing all this fasting for no reason? I really don't think it's biblical. Like, this is the question that our brothers and sisters that are outside of the faith ask, right? And the simple answer is, yes, it's biblical, right? And the reason why I'm kind of like sarcastically answering this question is because to ask that question is like, 
have you read the Bible? You know what I mean? It's like to, it questions whether that person has read the Bible. The reason why I say this is, well, first let's define what fasting is, right? It's very clear in the Bible that fasting is biblical, but let's kind of start from the base of what fasting is. What is fasting, right? So in our books, our Lord and Savior, like our, through, the, whole, through the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, our church fathers uh, wrote several books and canonical books. And one of them is the Fatanagus that we have in our church. And it says the following in chapter 15, article 1, and that's composed for fasting. And it gives a definition of what fasting is. So let me read that to you all. It says the following. Fasting is abstinence from food. And is observed by man at certain times determined by law to attain forgiveness of sins and much reward, obeying thus the one who fixed the law. So essentially, fasting is what? Abstaining from food. That's what it is. So fasting is abstaining from food. Now, take that definition. Don't forget that definition. Put that in your mind. Don't forget. All right? Fasting is abstaining from food. All right. So now let's answer that question if it's biblical or not. Let's go into Genesis, the first chapter or the first uh, book ever in scripture. Let's go to Genesis. We don't even have to go deep into the Bible to answer this question, right? Go and scroll to or flip to in our generation, which is scroll. Go to, go to chapter 2 uh, and that, go to verse 16 through 17. Let's read together what uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said. And it says, And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So in here we can see there's a commandment, a commandment to abstain from a certain food. Now, remember the definition that we talked about fasting. Fasting is what? Abstaining from food. And when we look at the first commandment in Genesis chapter 2, what does it talk about? God commanding man, commanding Adam and Eve to do what? abstain from food so the question of is fasting biblical the answer is yes indeed it is biblical because go to genesis chapter 2 you don't gotta go anywhere else just go from the beginning chapter 2 genesis it says yes the fasting is biblical my brothers and sisters and it's very certain and it's very throughout the old testament throughout the new testament right and when we look about uh, fasting in general, and we look about who is you know who fasted throughout the scripture, whether it's New or Old Testament, you know, starting from the Old Testament, we have Moses, we have Elijah, we have Daniel, we have Jonah, we have King David. Can I go on? Or and then when we slip, um, flip through the New Testament, we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then we have uh, Saint Paul, and then the apostles themselves fasted, right? And then we see the first church in the Book of Acts fasting. So. It's all over the biblical. It's all over the Bible. Flip to the Old or the New Testament. It's all over the Bible. So, of course, yes, fasting is biblical, my brothers and sisters. It is biblical. Be confident in it. In fact, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ answered this question about whether the topic of fasting, whether it's like, you know, should we continue to fast? Because fasting, you know, yes, it exists in the Old Testament. But what about the New Testament? Should we fast? Right? When our Lord was uh, given this question... He answered it in an actually in a very funny way. He said in Matthew, right? Flip to Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 16. He says the following. When you fast, pay attention. When you fast, do not look sober as the, hypocr as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their face to show others that they are fasting. Did you pay attention? Christ doesn't answer the question by saying, if you fast, or perhaps, well, fasting. He says, when you fast, as if saying, of course, fasting existed. When you fast, the, the question of fasting is not even in the, uh, should it not even be a thought? Of course, there's fasting. Fasting, of course, it's actually a commandment, you know? So, yes, Christ was confident saying when you fast, not if you fast. So, why do we question saying, should I fast? When our Lord said, when you fast. Be confident, my Lord. Be confident, my brothers and sisters. For our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us this commandment to fast. Because yes, it is biblical and it is a commandment that our Lord and Savior gave to His uh, crea creation. Now, one of the second uh, talking points that I want to discuss with everyone is why do we fast? Yes, we discussed that fasting is indeed biblical and it is essential, but why should we fast? That's another question that I feel like we need to answer. Why should we fast? Well, Again, referring back to uh, the article in Fatanagist chapter 15, or article 1, what did it say? Let's read back. It says, fasting is abstinence from food and is observed by man at certain times determined by law. And here, listen carefully, 
we get the answer of why we should fast. To attain forgiveness of sins. To attain forgiveness of sins. This is the singular and most important reason, my brothers and sisters, why we fast. To attain forgiveness of our sins. To attain mercy from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because in fasting, what do we do? We pray. We ask our Lord, have mercy on us. We go to church. We do prostration. We give and give to the poor and, and give uh, food to the hungry and drink to thirsty. And in that, our Lord sees and have pity on us. And in that, we receive what? Mercy. We receive compassion. So, why do we fast? Why? Because we want to attain what? Mercy. We want to attain compassion from our Lord. This is the main reason. And if you want biblical examples, right? One of the most important and actually biblical example is the Ninevites. The book of Jonah. The Ninevites, right? You guys know the story. I feel like I really don't have to go in depth into it. But, you know, when we look at Jonah chapter 3, we talk, we look at what? The story of the Ninevites, how wicked they were. And our, and our Lord, he was very, very angry with them. He was very, very angry. His anger was risen uh, upon the Ninevites. In fact, when we read Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 13, it talks about how angry the Lord was. And it says the following, I am against you. I will burn your chariots in smoke and the sword will devour your young lions. I will leave you no prey on the earth. The voice of your messengers will no longer be heard. This is the words of our Lord. How angry he was with the Ninevites because of their wickedness. How angry he was. So, what did our Lord do when he was angry with his creation? What does he do? Does he smite them? Does he punish them immediately? No, my brothers. What does he do? He sends them a prophet in order to bring them back from their wicked ways. In order to bring them back to repentance. This is the nature and the love of God. Look. Read. This is the nature and the love of God. Whenever we commit so many sins, we assume, we think God is like this judge waiting for us to mess up, all right? Waiting for us and then, like, hits us, right? Like our dad does, you know? Guy gets like, whenever we mess up, he gets like, you know, belt and then do, like, hits us. This is what we think God is. No, we mess up. What does God do? Okay, let me give them an opportunity to repent. And this opportunity for repentance for the Ninevites was what? Fasting. When we look at Jonah chapter 3, it's clear that it was through fasting, my brothers and sisters, that they were able to uh, attain forgiveness. When we look at Jonah chapter 3, starting from verse 4, let's read. It says the following. And Jonah began to enter into the city, going a day's journey, where he proclaimed and said, In forty days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the men of Nineveh, this is the most important part, believed God and they proclaimed a fast. They proclaimed a fast and put on the sackcloth from the greatest of them to the youngest. And the word came to the king of Nineveh and he rose from the throne and moved his robe and removed his robe and put on sackcloth and sat upon his ashes. And it was proclaimed and spoken to the Nineveh by the king and his great men saying, let not the men, the cattle, the oxen or the sheep taste anything, eat or even drink water. So the men were clothed with sackcloth and they carried out fervently and they cried out fervently to God. And they turned from their evil ways and from the wrongdoings of their hands saying, Who knows if God shall have a change of heart and turn his fierce anger away from us so that we shall not perish. It was through fasting, my brothers and sisters, that brought the mercy of God upon the Ninevites. They fasted. And the biggest and most beautiful part of this is even the animals fasted. They separated them so that the animals could not drink, so that they could not re reproduce, they could not do anything. They fasted. They even let the animals fast, my brothers and sisters. And we sit with the question, should I fast? The animals fasted. And we're sitting here, you and me, questioning, having a dialogue about, should I fast? Should I fast? The animals, even the children fasted. My brothers, the young ones fasted. All to do what? To attain forgiveness. To ask the Lord God, have mercy on me. And we, you and me, sit here and ask the questions, should I fast? Is fasting biblical? Like what could fasting do? They fasted in order to attain forgiveness of their sins. Are you not sinful? Are you holy, so holy that you don't need the mercy of God? If you are, then okay, throw away your fasting. 
But if you're like me, sinful and looking for Lord to have mercy on you, then fast. Fast and cry out that the Ninevites to God so that He can have mercy on your sins. So that He can give you another day to repent of your sins. This is what fasting does. It brings you the mercy of God closer to you, my brothers and sisters. Another thing why we should fast is because it brings us closer to God. There's a beautiful saying from our beloved church fathers, especially the monastics within the desert. If you guys know the Desert Fathers, they have beautiful sayings, right? There's even a book called The Sayings of the Desert Fathers, right? And there's a saying that they say about fasting that's actually pretty beautiful, and it says the following, right? Which roughly translates, fasting is the mother of prayer. And of course, you guys know, how can we commune with God if not with prayer? When a person is in fasting, their desire to pray and and get closer to God increases and it grows. And you know what's a great example? If you guys actually pay attention in church, what's the main reason people? What's like the season in our church where a lot of people start coming to church? When is it? It's during Hamama It's during the fasting season. During Abito. That's when everyone comes and goes to church. It's during what? The Great Lent fast. <laughs> During fasting season, it was where people start running to the church. I remember during COVID especially, especially when COVID came out, you know, like it started, uh, became a really p- uh, pandemic a couple, you know, two years ago. Everybody fasted. Everyone prayed. Everyone wanted to go to church. Everybody, but they couldn't. Right? So fasting does what? It brings you closer to God. That's all it does. In fact, St. Isaac the Syrian says the following, and it's so beautiful. He says, When a man begins to fast, he straight away yearns in his mind to enter into converse with God. This is St. Isaac the Syrian. It's talking about how much fasting can be a potent way in which it stirs up the desire to be one with God, stirs up the desire to commune with God, stirs up the desire to talk with God. This is what fasting does. So yes, fasting gets us closer to God. That's one reason why we should fast. Another, and the beautiful saying continues, right? The beautiful saying that we started. It says, Which means, and the beginning of all good works. Fasting is the beginning of all good works. My brothers and sisters, this is something that needs to be said, and I think this is the right platform for me. A lot of the times, my brothers and sisters, it's only through fasting or during the Ganat's Om or Abiyit's Om or Felicitat's Om that what we end up remembering our brothers and sisters in Christ that are hungry, the ones that are out in the streets that have no food and nothing to drink. It's during fasting season that they're like, you know what, when I'm doing fasting is when I'm going to go and help the poor, when I'm going to go and volunteer, when I'm going to go and help my uh, young brothers and sisters that have less fortunate than me. It's only during fasting season that I remember it. It's only during fasting season that I remember it. And it's sad, but I mean, hey, what can God do? We're very disobedient. So he asks us, the church continually tells us to keep fasting, to keep fasting, and brings upon us fast after fast in order so that we can remember our brothers and sisters that are hungry. Because sadly, it's only when we hunger that we remember those who are hungry. Sadly, it's only when we thirst we remember those who are thirsty. Sadly, it's only when we are wounding our own body that we remember our brothers and sisters who are getting wounded every single day by the harsh, harsh nature because they have nothing to shadow themselves with. The sun beats on them day and night. When it rains, everything on their bodies is wet. When it's cold, they have nowhere to be. It's only fasting when we remember our brothers and sisters, sadly. Let's change that. Let's keep it going during fasika. Once fasting is over, let's continue going. That's the challenge. Once, you know, instead of celebrating with our blood, like our, you know, uh, brothers and sisters in our family, eating dora with all these kids, all these things, how about celebrate it how the apostles celebrated it with the poor? And the last reason why I believe we should fast is to weaken our flesh and to weaken the enemy. One of the greatest tools that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave to us is the institution of fasting. 
Our Lord blessed the institution of fasting when He came and fasted in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. When He fought with the devil for 40 days and 40 nights, He gave us the true weapon that we can use to battle against our own passions, which is fasting. St. John the Dwarf, or Caduceus Hatsir, says the following. If a king wanted to take possession of, his enemy, of the enemy's cities, he would begin by cutting off the water and the food. And so his enemies, dying of hunger, would submit to him. And so it is the same with the passions of the flesh. If a man goes about fasting and hungering his body, the enemy of his soul grows weak. The enemy of his soul grows weak. Because the, the, the devil, what does he want? He wants your body to grow and big and strong. Because when the body grows, the soul declines. But if the soul grows, so does the body decline. So my brothers and sisters, fasting is the tool that we use in order to fight our own sins, to fight our own passions. Every single one of us, trust me, I'm speaking for myself right now. Every single one of us have a passion. We have something that we're struggling with every single day. Something that we're struggling with. Whether it be adultery, whether it be uh, you know, uh, gossip, whatever it may be. There's something that you are struggling with right now. So why not fast about it? Why not use this opportunity of fasting in order to defeat this sin that is troubling you? Now that we talked about why we should fast, let's get to the point, right? Talked a lot. Let's get to the point. How should we fast this Abitso? All right? How should we fast? Now, many people, you know, fasting, especially in this generation, especially in the you know, 21st, uh, 21st century, is not a big deal. Like, people fast all the time that are not religious, right? When we talk about, like, for instance, like, uh, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I don't know if I said his name right. That's crazy. But, you know, the guy from wrestling, uh, you know, WWE, that guy. He fasts all the time, right? If you, if you see any of his motivational videos, you know, which I definitely watch because, you know, I'm trying, you know, it's okay, we're talking about fasting. So we want not the body to grow, but the soul. But what I'm trying to say is he fasts from the morning until like about three o'clock, three o'clock p.m. I'm talking about p.m. That's crazy. He fasts for that long. And then he goes to work out and then he does all these things. So fasting is actually one of those things that people are, do in order to get skinnier, get in shape. You know, they want to become, you know, look nicer, whatever. All of these, uh, these things they do to fast, right? But how should we fast? Like, what is the, our main, like, you know, how, what is it, our fasting, the goal of it supposed to be? And our answer should be the answer that our Lord gave in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. He says the following, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. How should you fast? Fast. In order to seek righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. As the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't fast. To get skinnier. A lot of people say. What? Oh my goodness. Thank goodness. You know I've been eating too much. It's good for me. Because I will become lower in weight. Excuse me. Fasting is not about losing weight. Fasting is about gaining spiritual strength. You're talking about losing weight. I'm t no. Spiritual strength, my brothers and sisters. So, there's a couple of things that we need to do. Specifically, three things that I think we need to do in order to have this fast be blessed for us. The first thing is, there's a couple of questions we need to answer. The first one is, have an agenda when you fast. Have an agenda. I know this sounds so trivial, like very general, but as general as it may be, <laughs> Have an agenda when you fast, my brothers. What is it that you're fasting for? You know why you're fasting, right? You know that. We talked about that. You know that fasting is supposed to be, you, you know, you're supposed to do it. And you know, you know, why you're fasting it. But like, what are you fasting for? That's a question you need to answer. Like, what am I fasting for? Like, during this Abi Yutzom, what am I fasting for? Like, you know, and I know, there's certain things that we're struggling with every single day. But we never fast about it. When you want something, whenever like in, in, in Ethiopia or in Agarabit, like you know what I mean? Like whenever our mothers wanted something, what would they do? Subay. Right? When they wanted something from God, they would go to Subay. They would take seven days and they would fast and they would prostrate and they would pray in order to get one answer from God, in order to get blessings, in order to get answers from God, in order to get something. Right? So what are you fasting for? What are you trying to gain? Have an agenda when you fast. Don't just fast because it's a requirement. Fast with an agenda. What is you, you're fasting for? The second thing, 
What are you fasting from? The first one, what is you fasting for? The second one, what is it that you're fasting from? Is it just food? Huh? Is it just from Chick-fil-A? Pizza Hut? Is it just from those things? What are you fasting from, my brothers and sisters in Christ? What is it that you're fasting from? A lot of people think fasting is just about food and all of these things. But no, you can't just say you're giving up food. You can't just say you're giving up, you're giving up water burger or Chick-fil-A, all these things in and out. And I'm like, oh, I'm fasting. And then eating Chipotle once it's 12 p.m. I know. I got low. Don't try to lie. I know. Right? So it's like, you can't do that. Like, that's, no. What is it you're fasting from? Is it, what are you, like, what is something? You got to give up something for God. You have to give up something from God. Right? The Fatanagist, actually, it says the following. It's actually really beautiful what it says. It says, And fasting does not consist merely of taking bread and water only. The fast which is acceptable before God, listen, the fast which is acceptable before God is living in purity of heart. If the soul is hungry and thirsty, but the body eats whatever it likes, and the heart is entirely given to the, its delights, what benefit drives from your fast? What benefit drives from your fast? This is the book. Fatanik is asking you. If your body is continually eating and your soul is continually hungry, what is it that you're fasting from? What is the benefit of your fasting? You're just dieting. You're not fasting. You're dieting. Turn your diet into a fast, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Turn your diet into a fast. Our, med- the, 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 our church, we're blessed to have many saints. And one of the saints, Dusyarid, Right? He tells us in fasting, fast with your eyes, fast with your ears, fast with your mouth, even fast with your tongue, fast with your nose, fast with your hands. What does that mean? Our eyes sin every single day. So keep your eyes from seeing things that are sinful. Keep your ears from hearing gossip. Keep your mouth from saying harmful things. And keep your mouth, of course, from tasting things that you're not supposed to taste. And keep your ears, all these things, all your abilities, and keep your hands clean from any iniquities. Fast with all of your senses. A lot of us just fast with the mouth and say, oh, it's queen, you know. But you don't fast with your hands. You don't fast with your eyes. You watch very, you watch anything that you want to watch. You don't fast with your ears. So are you fasting? What is it that you're fasting from? And what is it that you're fasting? The last thing that I want to talk about is... Fast with prayer, prostration, and communion. Fast with prayer, prostration, and communion. A lot of the times during the fast, we don't prostrate. Prostration is not one of those things that's being taught. So I urge you, my brothers, ask about your, to, to your confession father, ask what, what prostration is or sigdat, and ask them. And ask for that because it's the most important. It's another tool that you can use during your fast. And the last thing is, the time that we're supposed to be fasting. And, you know, there's a lot of questions that throughout the fast people say, you know, what time are you supposed to fast? Are you, are you supposed to fast until 6, until 12, until 1, until 8 a.m.? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is it that you're supposed to fast from, right? People are wondering. Well, this is what the, the church fathers in the Fatan Agust stated. They said, in the first week, which is Omar Qal or Zawarada, you fast until sunset. Oh, you definitely heard me right. Let me get, let me get you know, closer to the mic. You, you fast until sunset. Mm-hmm. And then, the next 40 days, or, you fast until the 11th hour, or until 6 p.m. Until 6 p.m. Uh, no, no, you don't need to rewind. I, I definitely said it correctly. Until 6 p.m., you fast. And then, we go into Holy Week. Hamamat. Secret about you. Trust me, I don't think I, I, I really don't think I should read this. It says you're supposed to fast until the stars come out. The stars come out. That's what it says. So I don't know where you live, but the stars come out around Dallas. I don't know. I mean, ooh, stars come out is crazy. Some of y'all don't even see stars. So 24 hours, y'all will be fasting. But anyways, so now this is the structure of the fasting. This is the structure of the fasting that the church fathers gave. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is not to say, make sure you fast until 12, until the sun starts sunset because... Uh, no. This is the goal of fasting. This is what you're trying to attain. 
So that means if you're just, you know, sitting there and just being like, oh, you know, it's 12 o'clock, time to eat. Or, oh, you know, it's lunchtime. Let me, if you're just counting the hours, you're not fasting. Every single fast you're supposed to get a little bit better and better. So many of us are so confident and so like, you know, we're, we're so used to fasting until 12 o'clock. Some of us even sleep at 11 o'clock and then wake up and like, oh my goodness, I have one more hour left so I can fast, I can eat. Like some of us sleep until 12 a.m., let alone uh, breaking our fast at all. So no, you can't do that. So the, maybe try the first week, fast until 1 o'clock. And then the second week, push it to 1.30. Third week, push it to 2. And then so on and so forth. Push, push yourself. Stop being dizzy. This is the goal of fasting. May our Lord, God and Savior Jesus Christ, guide us in this fast in order to attain blessings. May our Lord Christ allow us to truly fast the fast with, with repentance in our hearts and with love for our brothers and sisters. May glory and honor be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of all ages. Amen. As always, thanks for tuning in to OTYD, the podcast. Be sure to check out our website at otyd.org and follow our Instagram and Facebook accounts at OTY Dallas. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we drop episodes on Sunday evenings. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. See you next time. Mm-hmm.